Zimbabwe has deported two Chinese nationals accused of subjecting two mine employees to a shocking and brutal form of punishment, igniting widespread outrage and raising serious concerns about the treatment of local workers by foreign investors. A disturbing video surfaced showing the two mine workers being tied to the bucket of a front-end loader and hoisted into the air. The footage went viral, prompting swift action from Zimbabwean authorities. Police identified the suspects and victims at Makanga Mine in Bandura, located about 88 kilometers northeast of the capital, Harare. In a brief statement, the police confirmed that investigations were ongoing but did not reveal the identities of the Chinese nationals involved. However, a government spokesperson later announced on social media that the two had been deported. The two foreign nationals involved in this abuse depicted on a video that went viral were deported, on Wednesday, posted Nick Mangwana, the government spokesperson, on X. The Zimbabwe Miners' Federation, ZMF, condemned the incident in the strongest terms, describing the assault as appalling, vile, inhumane, and savage. In a statement, the ZMF urged authorities to thoroughly investigate the mine's operating environment and address the rampant claims of worker abuse by Chinese bosses in the mining sector. This barbaric act is a blatant violation of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, which guarantees the right to personal security and freedom from torture or cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment. We will not stand idly while our members are subjected to such egregious abuse, the ZMF stated. The Federation demanded immediate arrests, prosecutions, and a comprehensive investigation into labor practices at Makanga Mine. The incident has shown a spotlight on broader issues within Zimbabwe's mining industry. Last year, Zimbabwean labor unions called for government action against Chinese employers accused of a range of abuses, including torture, beatings, gender-based violence, and poor working conditions. The Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions, the country's largest labor center, has accused government officials of shielding abusive Chinese employers in exchange for bribes. A recent report by the Zimbabwe Environmental Law Association, ZELA, titled The Handbook of Zimbabwe-China Economic Relations highlighted widespread abuse of local workers in Chinese-owned mines. The report found that Chinese mining companies often fail to pay minimum wages, enforce excessive work hours, and neglect safety regulations. The Chamber of Chinese Enterprises in Zimbabwe defended its members, arguing that they are being unfairly targeted due to the misconduct of a few. It urged the government to enforce laws impartially when dealing with foreign investors who violate local laws. Chinese investments have significantly increased in Zimbabwe since President Emerson Umningagwa came to power seven years ago, with substantial Chinese presence in mining, construction, energy, and agriculture. According to the Zimbabwe Development Agency, Chinese investors accounted for 60% of new foreign investments last year, with projects valued at $3.93 billion. Despite the economic benefits, incidents like the one at Makanga Mine highlight the urgent need for stricter oversight and enforcement of labor laws to protect local workers from abuse and exploitation. The deportation of the two Chinese nationals is a step towards justice but many argue that more must be done to address the systemic issues within the industry.